cautioning us for a couple of quarters now about rising geopolitical tensions and the effects that they're likely to have on all of our lives, including our financial lives. We've noticed that after a remarkable run-up in uh, the metals, gold and silver, over the past three or so weeks, that there was a bit of a... Uh, you could say a hitting of a uh, threshold on Friday and the close was was significantly lower than the intraday highs on Friday for the first time in, in some time. But you had posted a article uh, at the end of the week saying that uh, what do you think will happen? Will this be a major correction or will the ge geopolitical tensions undergird uh, basically concerns enough around the stability of our various systems, including our financial systems, to continue to support gold and silver. Can you give us a broad view of what you're watching geopolitically, and then we could uh, talk about what's happening in the uh, gold price at first? Yeah, um, I mean, the, 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 there are two big things in geopolitics. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm discounting China, Taiwan, and so on. That at the moment is merely saber rattling rather than anything more serious. Um, obviously, in the headlines at the moment is the situation in Israel, um, the uh, spat between Israel and Iran, um, Iran's response. What we see is the major players in this trying desperately not to get involved. I mean, it's quite clear from Iran's statements that it does not want to get involved in a full-scale war against Israel. Um, America doesn't want to get involved in a full-scale war uh, in the Middle East against Iran. It doesn't want to be drawn into the problem. I think Israel's problem really started uh, when Mohammed bin Salman uh, took over the... Um, uh, if you like, the executive responsibility, it's probably the best way to put it, uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, because really what happened was that he kicked out effectively the CIAs and other assets at the highest level in the royal family. And the point behind that is that he has then realigned Saudi Arabia more with um, Asian interests, if you like, rather than American interests. Uh, we see him working uh, with uh, Russia and uh, Iran, Inc incidentally, looking at Asian interests. Uh, he has um, uh, led the uh, re uh, rehabilitation of Iran in, in uh, um, Arab circles. Um, you know, so a truce has been called there. The Houthi war against Sau the Saudis was um, is effectively called off. Peace returned to the region as soon as the Americans were excluded. But put yourself in the position of Israel. Israel's major protector no longer has influence in the region, or at least its influence is very diminished. This must make Israel feel very insecure. And I think it was that that led to a policy of trying to get America to... Um, reassert its presence in the region. And I think that um, this was partly, um, uh, uh, if you like, behind the uh, attack on Gaza. Um, I think you could also say the attack on Gaza was um, born out of a sense of insecurity, if you like, from this changing geopolitical situation. The um, I think the way Israel is looking at uh, its future is that it really needs America to get involved in protecting it. And this is why, um, in my view, it attacked the consulate, uh, the Iranian consulate in uh, Damascus. Uh, and, um, you know, the hope was that this would draw America in uh, into a fight against uh, uh, Iran, which basically backs all the terrorist organizations from... Hamas to Hezbollah and, um, you know, there's sort of various other outfits as well as the Houthis. So um, from Israel's point of view, it was de it desperately needed America to uh, effectively neutralize the threat from Iran. America realizes just how difficult this situation is and does not want to get involved. 
However, I think that this situation is going to deteriorate further. It is bound to, because Netanyahu is on a course from which he cannot turn back. He will think of something else. Um, it probably won't be, um, if you like, as overtly um, uh, um, aggressive as some sort of um, bombing run, bombing attack, missiles, whatever, against Iran. There will probably be something less overt, but I wouldn't rule out something, you know, sort of, if you like, a bit headline catching, because Netanyahu is desperate to get America in to support Israel. There is tacit support in Israel, for Israel, from, uh, for example, Britain. Um, uh, we sent our fighters over from Cyprus to help um, knock out the the the, um, uh, the Iranian drones and missiles and so on and so forth, and along with the Jordanians, um, succeeded in downing quite a lot of them. Um, this is something which I think we are going to see it escalate over time. And the, the the concern for the West is that Iran controls the Straits of Hormuz. I think that as this escalates, we will find that not so much that Hormuz will be shut, but what um, Iran will do is it will allow shipping through on a very selective basis. Any oil which is going to Europe, I mean, incidentally, I think virtually nothing coming out of the Gulf goes to America. Um, but oil coming out of uh, the Gulf, going to Europe, going to um, possibly Japan as well, will be stopped. And that is going to drive up prices, oil prices, I think quite easily to well over $100. So we're going to see that is the risk, I think. And this is something that obviously President Biden in his um, year of intended re-election as president uh, will be very, very keen to avoid. So that's the first problem. The second problem is Ukraine. We mustn't forget the Ukraine. The Ukrainians have definitely um, virtually lost the war against Russia. Um, recently, Russia has started to step up its uh, campaign against um, Ukraine. It has bombed out a lot of the, of the uh, electricity stations, power generation, um, with very, very precise hypersonic uh, missiles. Um, the ground is now drying. So it is time for um, military mobilization, if you like, tanks and other equipment. Um, that is now going to be mobilized. And I think you'll find that within the next month or so, Russia will escalate its attacks against Ukraine and effectively uh, drive um, NATO out of Ukraine. Now, that is very, very important because this is the moment, I think, for Russia to really progress itself and also to progress its um, relationship with China in, economically, once it has, feels that it has secured its position, its Western boundary, this is really what it's all about as far as Russia is concerned. Once it's done that, then I think it's going to be turning more to, I suppose, trying to get rid of America and her allies out of Europe. I mean, this is really what, he wants, she, what Putin wants to achieve. And the same is true in the Middle East. And uh, he's got uh, Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia on his side, by far the most powerful nation in the area. 